Prima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, joins me to unpack his column titled Attempts to Bring Israel Within the Norms of Legality, Part 3. The way you say international decisions are to be interpreted does not seem to be a legal matter, but political. Well, when they interpret it in the international court, it is a legal form of argument, although sometimes they may be influenced by the state that they come from and things like that. But what I'm meaning is when international law is to be applied, the United States doesn't interpret it the same way as South Africa uh, and most states on the African, Asian, and Latin American continent, or Brazil particularly. So that interpret before uh, the, the International Court has made binding decisions, if the Security Council uh, were to act, they could force Israel, in theory, to abide by those decisions. But the way it's interpreted by the United States in particular makes most other states fall into line. Now, Germany at one stage said after January 26 that the decision had to be implemented. But it shifts all the time, Germany. And it shocks me because the Minister of Foreign Affairs is a Green, and the Green, pe green Party is usually very progressive on these sorts of things. But on this, they're not. And Raymond, to achieve a new consensus that will secure the international legal order requires new alliances. So how do you see the changes that have occurred and how do you understand the role and developments in Germany, for example? In the West, what I think is the Western states that are backing Israel are taking heat. They're getting flack for backing America and, and backing Israel and North America. What I think is a problem is, uh, is to get them to understand that they are going to pay a price, not just the United States. Diplomatically, it's already very clear that there is now a big uh, chasm in the thinking between the North and the South. And the people from the South are very unhappy about, I also mentioned in my art, one of my articles, that the International Criminal Court acted very quickly against Russia. There have been complaints about uh, Israel and nothing has happened. And one of the person, people studying it goes through the record of the person who's the prosecutor and he's got a record and the ICC has got a record of bringing black people, people from the South to book, but not the rest. So Germany is something that's quite hard to understand. You know, they've got a whole situation where they have banned people who have made statements about the Palestinians from cultural events, which have been going on for about 23 years in Germany. So they've made a turn which is very anti the South, anti-Palestinians in particular. And I wonder whether their own parties, in the case of the Greens particularly, would agree with that. But there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, disagreement in Germany and most of these other countries. And a lot of it is by Palestinians who now live there. In Germany, the Palestinians are probably the biggest refugee group in the country. And lastly, Raymond, we have a UN Security Council decision calling for a ceasefire and other actions in the most recent ICJ decision that is aimed at Israeli genocide. But Israel ignores and the US supplies massive armaments a day or so later. So what can stop this lawlessness? And you referred to mass activities and how significant that be? We're talking about international. Then you've got st states, and then you've got mass activities. But there hasn't been mass activities on this scale internationally 
probably since the Vietnam War and never before for the Palestinians. So you're talking about mass activities where you've got people from all religions, uh, you know, old rabbis who are very, very religious coming out. Uh, they make a statement about in love and fury because they they believe it's unjustifiable to commit this genocide. You've got students. You see, on the one hand, you have students, but on the other hand, in top universities like Harvard, they fired the president, what we would call the vice chancellor, for being antagonistic to Israel, which is depicted as anti-Semitism. But what I think we must understand is that nothing is going to happen tomorrow, but there's a buildup of demonstrations, which is almost every day. If you look at the United States, it's got, what's it, 50 states, I can't remember, 48 or 50 states, but almost every single day, something is blocked off or roads are closed because there are these massive demonstrations. The other day, Biden was raising funds with Clinton and Obama. It was completely disrupted. They raised the money, but it was disrupted. So I think our only real hope is pressure from below, which I think is already having an effect on states. The one that's being hit hardest seems to be Biden's candidacy for president because it, it may well be that he will lose. Unfortunately, he will lose to Trump, which is not a happy thought. So I think the pressure from below, uh, I don't have a blueprint. I'm not in these states. I'm not a mass uh, activity person at this moment. So in South Africa, there is support anyway. But in, in this, it'll be good that they're keeping it up in UK, France, Germany, all these places. And that's been happening. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about attempts to bring Israel within the norms of legality at three.